Hi, my name is Steve Bowler, and in this video, I'm going to be configuring uh, some basic OSPF principles and just going over the foundations with OSPF. There's a lot to the protocol, and that's why uh, it's used and implemented in a lot of networks uh, worldwide. Uh, it's real scalable, and it's not vendor specific like uh, you know EIGRP. You can only run on Cisco routers. Uh, but OSPF, you, you'll see, you can run on pretty much any different vendor supports it. Um, it can get pretty complicated because there's a lot of different uh, things in OSPF, uh, which makes it complicated, but at the same time makes it very uh, scalable and uh, very tunable. Um, so what we're going to do here in this lab, we're just going to, I'm going to show you uh, the basics of OSPF, how to get it running in your network, uh, maybe how to do some authentication, uh, router authentication in OSPF, and uh, maybe I'll finish off and we'll just do some uh, basic summarization in OSPF. Okay, so what what you've seen here is uh, we have area zero, which is router three and router four. Uh, router 3 is using its uh, faster than at 0, 1 in area 0, and then its faster than at 0, 0 is in area 1, along with router 2 and router 1 is faster than at 0, 0. So what we have in area 1, we have an Ethernet uh, connection here. Uh, we're using the 192.168.0.0 slash 29 network and router 2 is going to be originating uh, the 1 and 2 networks and router 1 is going to be originating the 3 and 4 networks and then what we're going to do is we're going to summarize on router 3 into area 0 we're going to summarize those all those routes together uh, there's two different ways pretty much you know to do summarization within OSPF you have uh, the area range command and then you have the summary address command. Uh, the summary address command is, is going to be used to summarize uh, routes that are external uh, to the OSPF uh, routing domain and then the area range command is used for internal routes within OSPF. So what we're going to be using, if you haven't guessed it, uh, we're going to be using the area range command um, because these, you know, these networks are going to be originated in OSPF. We're going to advertise them into OSPF. So, okay, that's enough explanation, I guess, for now. Um, again, I haven't been doing the videos for about a month now. Uh, I've been on day shift for a little while, and I've been trying to get my other computer up and running. And I finally got it up and running, and I'm back into uh, study mode. So uh, I'm going to share some more videos with you guys, go over some OSPF, maybe some EIGRP, some redistribution. Uh, you know, try to get into a little more, uh, a little more of the topics that are involved in the CCIE routing and switching. Okay, so as you can see, we have all the routers started here. Okay. What we're going to do here, we're going to go ahead and uh, get into router 1. We're going to go ahead and set it up for OSPF. So, let's go ahead here and get on the command line and start doing some configuration here. Um, we're just going to create loopback 0 and 1 for those networks. So, for here, we're just going to set the host name. And then uh, what we'll do here is we'll go under line console zero, set the no exact timeout command. And then uh, what we're doing is we're going to be running interface faster than at zero zero. Give it the IP address, 192.168.0.1. And we're going to give it the slash 29, so it's going to be on the uh, let's see, 248 network. All right, so next we're gonna do no shut on it. And we'll go ahead and we'll just do the interface configurations first. So I'm gonna do the loopbacks. 
All right, so let's go ahead here and we'll go ahead and interface loopback zero. We'll make loopback zero the, uh, let's see, I'm on router one, loopback zero, we'll give it the three network. So 192.168.3.1, make that a slash. We'll make all these slash 24s. So we're gonna go loopback one. We'll give it 4.1. Okay, so that's good for now. We got the interfaces configured, and we're going to, I guess what we could do is go ahead and uh, go into uh, set up OSPF now. What we want to do to set up OSPF, um, if you just go into global config, type in router OSPF, then give it a process ID. Uh, we're going to give it the process ID of, we'll just give it one. And what we'll do here is now you can see we got a, a lot of commands we can do inside of OSPF. Uh, what we'll do is we're going to set up what area it's in. So we'll do the area command here at the top. And this is area one, so we're going to do area one. And then let's see here. Um, uh, I guess we don't need to do this just yet. Uh, I was going to set up some uh, authentication, but let's stick to now. Let's just get these. Uh, what we need to do is get our, our interfaces advertised inside of OSPF. And uh, the way we can do that is with the network command. So what we're going to do is we're going to put in here network, and then we'll put in uh, 192.168. What we're going to do is advertise our our fast Ethernet interface first, so that's going to be 0 0.1. And then, as you can see here, we got the wildcard bits, and what this will do is specify, you know, uh, it, you know, like a, a basically a mask within this network range, so we can specify, you know, like a, you know what interfaces we want advertised. Uh, what we're going to do is we're just going to advertise just this fast Ethernet interface. So what we're going to do is uh, a wildcard of all zeros. And then here what we're going to do is set the area. Like for instance, to go back to this, if we put in here like 0 .0 0.0.0.255, what this is going to do is advertise this whole 192.168.0 range, you know, everything from 1 all the way up to 255, you know, everything inside of there, it's going to uh, try to find it on the router on any of the interfaces, and then it'll try to establish OSPF adjacencies across those. But what we want to do is we want to uh, kind of lock down our OSPF configuration uh, and just just advertise the, uh, the fast Ethernet 00, zero interface. So that's why we give it kind of like a host mask of all zeros. And as you can see, OSPF uses the wildcard bit mask, kind of like, you know, ACLs. So not really hard logic to understand here. So we're going to use network 1.2.1.2.0.1, then all zeros. Then as you can see here, here's where we specify the area. And as you can see here, if we go back to our drawing, we're in area 1 on router 1. So we're just going to put in here area one and hit enter. Okay. So now that that's done, uh, what we can do is advertise our other networks in there. So we'll go back here. And as you can see here on router one, the networks, I'm sorry, the uh, 